I just figure no matter what, I'm going to have a reaction to something. So well just, just hope that, day. just do it and hope that it's not anaphylaxis. She was like allergic to a lot of food. And I told her, can she like pass down like Yankee Stadium or something? And I give her the shot. And then like, I'll be like on, I'll be like on the Save Ellen. the day. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then like, be the hero. <laughs> yeah. And then like, they'll, they'll give me like free tickets. You know, Ellen DeGeneres would call me. <laughs> I mean, I think one, I think it could be a different name though. Like pasta. Oh, I know, I know. When I say that to people, okay, so when I say like postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome they're usually like wow that's a mouthful and I'm like also referred to as POTS and yeah. and it just I don't know it just sounds silly but I, I, I know EDS. Though, because it's EDS and EDS also happens to erectile dysfunction so uh, whenever <laughs> and we look completely able-bodied and so from the outside people think like, oh, you're just being dramatic or, oh, you're like, you're fine. Like, you're fine. You're young, like whatever you're, there's nothing wrong with you. But in reality, we're dealing with these really crazy symptoms that are debilitating and painful. And it makes it really hard to live a normal life. Like we could have a totally normal conversation. I could totally change the title of the video yeah. or, <laughs> yeah. and we'll be talking about strawberries and like everyone be like oh it's about strawberries you know yeah, yeah, yeah. epstein bar virus not to get confused with jeffrey epstein for the record <laughs> for the record a he did not kill a himself different a different terrible it, yeah the information in the podcast is not intended or implied to be a substitute for professional medical advice diagnosis or treatment Please talk to a medical professional before doing anything that may impact your health. Hello, welcome to my podcast, Too Much One Jewish, One Joey Suits. I am Joey Suits, and I'll be giving a mic to actually, we got two guests today. It, so today will be three mics One Joey Suits. I'll be giving a mic to Claire Gattini and Jessica Persiani. Not only the to not only the rare to have the disease that I'll be listening shortly, it is even rare to find two people with the same adapt for diseases. It's even rare to have the two guys in the same podcast together. They're like the Chinese Pokemon to ever exist, basically. They run a super fun podcast called This Ill Only Heard a Little Bit. Welcome to my podcast, guys. Hey, yeah. thanks for having us. <laughs> um, just wanted to say that you guys have a fabulous podcast. As I was doing research on you guys. I listened to your podcast and I was smiling five minutes into it. And okay. I was like, <laughs> That's I was like this is going to be so good and enjoyable. And I can't wait to have you guys on. Oh, thank you. Um, I feel like yeah. laughing is our goal. Yeah. If you can smile, we did it. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you're talking about the most worst thing a person can have. And they're like <laughs> smiling through and it's laughing. So it's like, I, I don't know if you like should be laughing or not, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, but like I, I mentioned before, like both of you guys have amazing stories on the on the show and uh, I could easily interview both of you guys separately and make great episodes. So it's, it could be a handful episode today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I want to play a game with you guys. You ready? So, okay. <laughs> um, so everyone listening can play too. I am going to talk and explain the disease they have in common. Then you guys can tell which disease you would not want to have or want to disappear. Don't tell me yet, um, but you can think of it as I explained it to the audience so they can participate. Okay. Okay, first they have antler dandler syndrome or EDS. That is when the joints move further than they are supposed to and have stretchy skin that can be stretched further than usual, lead to a lot of dislocation and tons of chronic pain the older they get. They got postural orthostatic tachycardia, syndrome or a lot of people know it as pod. It is a condition that affects blood flow to blow. The body can't flow properly so lightheadedness fainting and rapid increase of heartbeat when standing but feeling better sitting or in a reclining position. I say these things not too loudly but it's a very serious and life disabling if not on any medication. I have interviewed Ashley Ribbentrop who also has pods and she has her own documentary about it. Um, I interviewed her, and that was a good, super great episode. 
anybody should listen to it after this podcast. <laughs> we love Ashley. Yeah. 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 She didn't, yeah. She, yeah, she was really cool to talk to. Um, yeah. Then we got mast cell activation with it experiencing all the symptoms of allergic reaction without having an allergic reaction. It would, <laughs> it would be an episode that includes high swelling, low blood pressure, difficulty breathing, and severe diarrhea. Okay. Yeah, that's the best part. <laughs> Um, so I, that's it. Uh, should I add my disease to the mix? Or did yeah. you guys? If you okay. want. Okay, then I have an extremely rare disease called fibro dysplasia, autophagy and progressiva, or FLP for short. It is a disease where I get these swelling called flares and bones that start growing. I lock my body into place. The older I get, the more pain and disabling I will get with no signs of relief except pain medication. All right, that's it. So okay. what? So what would you guys want to disappear? <laughs> Ideally, all of it. But yeah. <laughs> there's no all the above options. Sorry, guys. I, know. <laughs> I mean, I think for me, my like easy choice would be the Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, but that kind of is because I know that it like it's, is the beginning of the domino effect. So yeah, it's, it's connected to everything. But I feel like. POTS makes it really hard to live a normal life. And so if I was able to get rid of POTS, I feel like I'd be able to function a lot better like day to day. I'd probably have a lot less fatigue and a lot less pain. pain and, and yeah, I think that would definitely improve my life. I agree because I was totally fine for 30 plus years with the Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. It didn't really bother me that much, but, um, when the POTS came into effect, it was like, oh my God, my whole world just changed. So I think that's what I would probably get rid of. Yeah. <laughs> so didn't it affect okay. both of you guys separately? Are you saying that you both have different de se severity of the diseases then? Well, I would say there's a lot of similarities, but but then there are, a lot, are some differences as well. Yeah, there's some things that Jessica experiences that I don't and vice versa. Jessica has white matter on her brain, which I don't have. Um, and Claire has serious gastro issues right now, which yeah. I don't have the severity, but she has. Yeah, so. yeah. I have like gastroparesis um, and then... Also, I have hydronephrosis, which Jessica doesn't have, um, and that affects my right kidney. So, I like how you both guide like know everything about each other. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Well, I mean, it's it's. I feel like we realized pretty quickly we had a seriously unique situation. Me in particular, because I got sick significantly later and um so I was able to call her and ask her anytime I had an issue and so really nobody understands like she understands in our worlds and so oftentimes we do call each other yeah I'll be <laughs> like have you ever had this weird symptom have you ever experienced this what do you do for that and it's nice to be able to call on each other and be like Okay, this is normal. I'm not dying. Okay, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> like, <laughs> not today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know with POTS that affects everyone differently. And when I interviewed Ashley, I don't know. Have you guys seen a documentary with her? Yes. Yeah. It's so good. We actually had a, a watch party with our family and we had everyone over. We had a projector screen and we watched wow. it. It was so great. It was, it was so, so great. Yeah. yeah. I highly yeah. recommend it. I mean, it was a great, I, I, I did watch it by myself because I like, I was late to, the, I didn't know who she was till, yeah. um, to a meetup, but the documentary was super great. But in the, during the documentary, she had like a scene where she was like showing all her pills. Yeah. It was like, it was like a huge pile. Like you yeah. could build, you could build like a building with it or something. Uh, yeah. yeah, totally. <laughs> so like, since you guys are related and have the same diseases, but does that mean that the medicine works the same for you or the different medicines for you? Well, I think for me, because when I got sick originally and it went to my brain and I had the white matter on my brain, 
there were a few medications that I took that were different, but we also take similar medications. We both have to take a beta blocker yeah. and that really helps both of us equally. But then there are other medications. I mean, for the most part, we're the same. Yeah. There's a few things that are different. Like for me, I tried just the beta blocker and it didn't work well on its own. So I added a blood pressure medication and they work better together and some things like that, that we just figured out like, oh, this medication works better for me. Um, but the treatment for POTS across the board is pretty similar. Like you're going to be on salt. You're going to be some people, if it's more like, if it's worse than just what salt can do for you, then you're going to be on a beta blocker or blood pressure medication. So, um, we're both on those. Um, but I don't know if we're on the same one. Well, yeah, one of them one were of on them the same, same because she was having a flare up and I remember I came over to the house and I was like, you need to add this. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. then the next day her, her neurologist was like, yeah, you need to up that medication. I'm like, yes, yeah, <laughs> basically a doctor. <laughs> so do you guys go to like the doctor together or like make back to back appointments just to um, we've, we actually, yes, we, we do. To. Yeah. And we do like accompany each other with our mom also yeah. to medical appointments. Our um, doctors, our doctors are like around three to four hours away. So if we can uh, put our appointments together, then mm-hmm. we can travel together and it's a lot easier on us because then, because our mom brings us. And so then she can just drive both of us and we can just sleep. <laughs> and It makes it a lot easier for everyone involved. Um, so when we can, we try to. Mm-hmm. Are you guys allowed to drive? Actually, surprisingly enough, yes, we are. Yeah. Although sometimes I question that. <laughs> yeah, maybe we shouldn't be allowed, but we are allowed. <laughs> there, there are like definitely days where it's like, I can't do this today. I, I know I'm not feeling good and I'm nervous. And there was like a pretty scary period of time before I had a diagnosis that I actually did have to tell my daughter at the time, you know, if anything were to happen, this is what you need to do in the car. So there, there are scary moments for sure, but I feel like with medication and just listening to my body and doing things right, we both are in a good place, but that's not to say there aren't days, but I know what you mean, because when you have episodes of um, passing out, probably shouldn't be up there. The I think it's, I think that there is the question whether or not you could drive. Yeah. So like, what do you tell your daughter to do? Okay, so I have just, she's bigger now. This is when she was smaller, but I basically like showed her, like if anything happens to me, this is the break. And then this is how you put it in park because what else I didn't you know, you yeah. know? I mean, at this point now she's taller than me. So <laughs> I'm not sure she could climb in my lap and do that. But I, I mean, I think, yeah. I don't know. I. <laughs> We've had that discussion because I recently had a really big flare. And um, so we did have to repeat that conversation. But thinking about it, I'm like, I don't know that she could like get in my lap anymore. Yeah. (laughs) Just have to pull the e brake or something. Yeah. So just showing her those things. You got to get one of those, um, you know, when you do test drive. Not test drive the. Yeah. It's on the other side. For sure. There you That's go. genius. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how I didn't think about that. That's genius. I love it. You got to buy one of those um, training cars or whatever. I don't know what you call them. But. Yeah. Yes, driver's <laughs> training for sure. But like long distances, we don't drive long distances. Yeah. yeah. So like, do you know when like you're going to pass out or the kind of like instant, like minute? Well, it happens pretty fast. But for me, I can usually tell like this like yesterday, actually, I was laying in bed and I'm like, I could feel my heart was like pounding, pounding, pounding. And I'm like on my watch and I'm like, okay, what is it at? And it's like 163, just because oh I God. ate, just because I ate something. Um, but usually you get that kind of like, you can feel the muffled over your ears and things start to get a little bit narrow. And I, I start to feel like I'm either going to poop my pants or yeah. throw up I'm like I don't know where it's gonna come from and I then usually, that's it I usually just get like really really hot and sweaty and my face will go flush um and I'll get the ringing in my ears and then the tunnel and it'll black out yeah but it's pretty quick for me it's just like 
I'll start sweating. And as soon as I start like sweating a ton for no reason, I know like, okay, I need to sit down. But yeah. well, I know with pods, you have to lie down, put your feet up so that enough yeah, time yeah. occurrence for you. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's just hard because it will, especially I feel like during COVID, you know how much more dirty things are now. So like yeah. laying on the floor in a store, I mean, it happens for sure. But um, now I'm like, where am I laying? <laughs> Do I want to? Like what's yeah. touching the ground? But I mean, it happens for sure. I've been known to do it in my office at work a lot. My uh, coworkers will take pictures of me because I think it's funny because <laughs> I'll just come in and I'll like lay on the ground and put my legs on the wall. And they're like, Claire's doing her thing again. <laughs> like you have like a sign that said, be back in 15 minutes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Yeah. <laughs> No, I mean, um, like when I was talking to Ashley about this, I found it really funny that so I, I was like joking with her and I'm like, do you guys have like a room where you did all lie down? And she was like, oh, yeah, we did have like a room with like pillows and snacks and like yeah. everyone that like, goes in there, like no question that and just on the floor. Yeah. yeah. And maybe like 30 people just on the floor with their legs up. You have yep. to do what you have to do. I know. I know. I, I like love an ice pack when that happens too. I'll like yeah. tell my son, I'll be like, Jack, hurry. And he like goes and gets like a snack. And usually <laughs> I have a water bottle near. And then I'm like, I need an ice pack. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, it was just like a hilarious image. And then I was like, Yeah. <laughs> okay. And then it's like, there's like some serious in this. But like, yeah, like I said, not too long, but very life disabling. Like, so Ashley appeared to have no medication for the test. Have you guys need to do a similar test to do that? Or? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So, for in Ashley's situation, I, I haven't been in that situation. And I think imagining it is very scary thinking about going off your medication and, and starting over and like doing all the tests just to confirm at a new place is really scary and daunting to think about. Um, I was sick and I didn't start medication until I was diagnosed. So the tilt table test I did, I, I didn't pass out, but Claire did pass out. Yeah. And that was before diagnosis and medication going off of it and having a re-diagnosis like Ashley it sounds very intimidating and scary. I yeah. mean, is that necessary to be re-diagnosed when you're diagnosed? Well, I mean, I think like when you're, so we're at Stanford and I think if we were maybe to switch to the a Mayo Clinic location, I could see where they would say, you know, we need to be sure that we have the right diagnosis and we need to reconfirm. So I could totally see that there's a reasonable reason for that need. Um, it just sounds very scary to me. Yeah, just starting over after you've worked so hard to get to like a spot where you feel like you're human and then to stop all of that and then try to get back on track after it would be really difficult um, yeah so we've never had to do that but uh, yeah I, the tilt table test is not great I think in that like series of tests that you do for me the the worst part of that is the sweat test it's like it's like someone puts a pile of of um fire ants in like this tiny little dime size section of your body all over <laughs> and then it's just like oh it just feels like stinging I didn't I didn't even really notice the um sweat test I couldn't feel it I don't know if that's because I was like doing the tilt hand test at the same time or I don't know, nerve damage, um, but I didn't feel it. The tilt table test, though, was really rough for me. I They didn't even get me fully up before I passed out. Um, Wait, what so, is this sweat test? I'm not familiar. So pretty much uh, with POTS, a lot of people have abnormal sweat. And so you either don't sweat at all or sweat very little. And so they want to test your sweat and see if, you're sweating a normal amount. Um, and so they put these little like suction cups that are about the size of a dime, if I'm remembering correctly. And they put them in a few different places on your body. And what it does is it like 
there's water around the rim so that your body is getting fluid. And then in the center of it, they're trying to get your body to produce sweat, but it just, it just hurts. I don't know. It feels like a little like prickly, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So they're trying to like, see, do you sweat? Do you not sweat? And then there's a room actually where they will like get it really hot to see if you sweat. And then they like, they like poof this powder on you and it'll like change color depending on where your body is sweating. I didn't have to do that. Neither did Claire, but I saw the room. I'm like, what is that? (laughs) Does it sound cool, but intimidating? (laughs) Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I definitely wasn't sweating for a while until my medication started again. And then I remember like I was sweating one day and I realized, oh my gosh, my body's starting to work again and doing the right thing. So that was, it sounds silly, but I was excited that I was sweating again. <laughs> and this was a pot diagnosis or this was the other diagnosis? This is all pots. Yeah. Yeah. You get like the other di- diagnosis, the mast cell, I think. The mast cell. Mm-hmm. Could that, like, how do you know what it from what area? Like, so you- our our neurologist said that it's pretty common with POTS because it's your autonomic center in your brain, which is kind of like your the motherboard of your body. It starts to send all these false signals everywhere. And so he said it's very common for someone to have muscle activation if they have POTS and it comes and goes, you know, there, there'll be times where I love strawberries. And so I'm eating strawberries a lot when it's seasonal and there's a lot of produce where we live. So it's all fresh. And so you kind of want to take advantage. And all of a sudden, like my face was like I started getting hives on my face, which I felt my face was hot, but I didn't even notice. And my mom's like, oh my, what's happening to your face? You're turning into a strawberry. I know. (laughs) So I had to like give that up. And it's, I don't know. It's just strange. Yeah. I've had, I mean, I'm the type of person that like anything I try, like medication, even a new lotion or a body wash, I'll use it a couple of times. Then I have hives and I have to stop using it. I'm just like very reactive. I've gone to anaphylaxis one time um, for a fish allergy, which ended up going away because that's what my cell activation <laughs> likes to do. You have an allergy one day and you don't the next. Um, but yeah, it's very, it's a very weird syndrome because you can never fully like predict, predict anything about it. You're just like, okay, like I'm today, I'm just going to be allergic to all stone fruits just because my body gets pollens confused. Like (laughs) today, I'm just going to be allergic to it. And I just won't eat it for a week or so. And then I'll go back to normal or whatever. It's very unpredictable. unpredictable. And then I'm assuming it's different for you guys. You'll have different days of. Yeah. 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 I can use like um, skincare products a lot easier than Claire can. Claire. Yeah, I can't Claire use can. like any skin products. I have to be very careful. Um, cause I will just randomly get hives all over. Um, and she it's was her eyebrows recently and her eyebrows were swollen. <laughs> it was so <laughs> embarrassing. My whole eyebrows were swollen and they're like peeling. I was like, oh my gosh. And I only used it one time and I was like, okay, I'm never using that again. <laughs> so like, do you do like a skin test? Like it's like on your arm or something or you just kind of go for it? Uh, I feel like we're going to go <laughs> We kind of just go for it. <laughs> excited about different things you're like oh this smells great or like this yeah. feels good on my skin and so then you're like okay I'm gonna try it and I just figure no matter what I'm gonna have a reaction to something so just, just hope okay. that just do it and hope that it's not anaphylaxis so like you mentioned that, like you get alerted you did like try again in like a month or so or you did kind of never again well for me it was like The strawberries, for example, I will take, I will not for like the rest of that season. And then next year I'll be like, all right, I'm going to give this like a shot again. Um, Yeah. Strawberries are super great. I know. I know. (laughs) Totally. Um, So with things like that, usually like, I'll just like lay off it for a season or something and then give it another shot. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've done some like, testing I guess but for the most part I'll just I'll realize 
a product is giving me an allergic reaction, so I stopped using it. Um, and I usually won't go back to it. With the like fish allergy, I went back, I didn't eat it for years because I was afraid. Um, after that, like after my throat closed up and everything, it was just so traumatic for me. I was like, mm -hmm. okay, I'm just never gonna eat fish again. Um, and then time went by and my mom was like, I bet you that you could probably have fish again. And so I did blood work and sure enough, they told me I could. Um, and so I slowly started eating a little bit here and there just cause I was still nervous. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I've done like with medications, it's pretty hard. Like I'll just randomly get an allergic reaction um and i'll have to stop that medication i've done gene site testing to see what proteins in my body break down medications best um, and that's helped me um, narrow my search when i'm looking for the perfect medication but um, a lot of times it's like okay that medication wasn't the right one let's stop it and try again well i know with like like let's say the strawberry for example could you try in different like forms like so you say you're allergic to strawberries, but could you have it in like jam or like could you cook it since like it changes the properties? Well, I'll tell you, when I had the reaction, I was actually having a strawberry muddled margarita. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, it was in a different form, but then I think I like tried it one more time later. I think, I don't remember if I had it in like some a food that it had like been like a dessert or something, but I tried it in a different form the next time and it was the same thing. So I was like, okay, uh, just forget it. Those are done. Yeah. Oh. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I love fruit too. So it's like, it's, yeah. yeah, it's a bummer for sure. So, so do you have, so like if you're allergic, like what do you do after? Like do you have the, um, the allergic shot? The EpiPen. Like, yeah. Do you have Yeah, those? we have an EpiPen in the house. Um, I haven't, I haven't needed that. I've had epinephrine like at a hospital, but I haven't had to self inject. No. Um, but I have like, I'll, I honestly just use Benadryl or hydroxyzine, which is like a higher dose antihistamine. Um, and if I, if I'm like, if my throat's closing, like I just go to the hospital, like I'm not gonna try to fix it on my own. <laughs> Um, but with just like hives or something, I can just take hydroxyzine and then I know I'm going to be out the rest of the day because it makes you so tired. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, um, my ex was like allergic to a lot of food and I told her, can she like pass down like Yankee stadium or something? And I give it a shot and then like, I'll be on, like, on I'll be like on Save the, the day. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then like, be the hero. Yeah, and then like they'll, they'll give me like free tickets. You know, I'll let the generous would call me, <laughs> yeah. and like I'll just have this hope. I have like a day after me or something, and throw the yeah. first I mean, two weeks ago I fainted in a football game, and I got nothing out of it <laughs> except a free ride to my car. <laughs> no, you got you got me more like a spectacle. Like I got fall on the field or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> then they were just like all hovering over me and I was just like just let me go home <laughs> <laughs> I mean it might be I'm I don't know it might be a little embarrassing like the camera's on you and you have 40,000 yeah. people <laughs> looking at you yeah, yeah. I, exactly. <laughs> I think like, <laughs> and then you have to explain to all the EMTs you're like I'm not dying this is normal like just just give me some ice and get me out of this area and I'll be fine like calm down this is normal for me like I know it's not normal for other people but this is my normal so uh, do they actually listen to you though not always I feel, I feel like because it's even though it's considerably common process um it's not something that people really know about and so it's very it can be very confusing for some people as to like what you're trying to explain to them they're like what that doesn't what really? but then no, that doesn't happen. yeah but then I had an episode before I was diagnosed and there was um there was an NP actually there and she actually told me it seems like you're having an autonomic dysfunction of some sort so somehow she knew what was going on so it just kind of depends I think yeah. but and some doctors know a ton about it 
and then some doctors are just now learning about it. So you kind of get a mixed bag. Sometimes they're like, oh, can you like describe that to me? Can you explain it to me? And sometimes they're like, oh yeah, I know all about this. Um, which is always fun. Like it's always cool to meet somebody like an EMT or a nurse practitioner or whatever that like knows about what you have. Cause it's like, it's a little bit hopeful because yeah. when I was diagnosed, like nobody. it felt like nobody knew what I was talking about. So now people are kind of starting to learn more about it. It's kind of like, I guess the, it, I don't know if this is the right word, but kind of like the silver lining of COVID this last year and a half so many people with long haul symptoms are being diagnosed with POTS. And so what's that, what that's doing in turn is forcing all of these people in the medical field to learn so much more about it. And, you know, it's, it's a bummer that people have to suffer in order for others to become more educated in something, but um, we're seeing that and hearing a lot more about it, about people that, you know, well, my doctor is the one that discovered what was going on and normally they wouldn't. Yeah, yeah. And more pe- more money will go towards research, more people will get diagnosed and it'll just be a lot more understanding of what we go through day to day because just a few years ago, nobody knew yeah, what we had. I feel like uh, the timing of Ashley's documentary was like perfect. Yeah. She, it was just incredible, her timing. I mean, I mean, I definitely didn't know about Pa till like two weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but welcome, welcome to the party. Yeah. No, I mean, I think one, I think it could be a different name though, like Pa. Oh, so. I know. I know. When I say that to people, okay, so when I say like, postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome they're usually like wow that's a mouthful and I'm like also referred to as POTS and yeah. and it just I don't know it just sounds silly but I, I, I know EDS. Though, because it's EDS and EDS also happens to be erectile dysfunction so uh, whenever we're like, oh, we have EDS like you have to specify we have Ehlers-Danlos syndrome yeah so <laughs> I actually didn't know that Oh. Yeah. But, <laughs> um, yeah, because like if you see I'm on pot, you know, the first thing everyone could think is you're high or something. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> yes, I know, I know. Yeah. But it seems like pot will be it's a rare disease now, but I feel like maybe in like 10 or 20 years, it will not be a rare disease, maybe. Yeah. I'm thinking, thinking, yeah. Like, I mean, it's great that like you guys are advocating for it, but a lot of people are advocating for POTS, just the knowledge of it. I feel like this, our generation will be much more knowledgeable in terms of like medical things. Definitely. Yeah. So, so like, like I remember, I think Claire was explaining like her symptoms and I'm like, that sounds like POTS. Yeah. And then like 10 minutes later, and she's like, I have POTS. And I'm like, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I knew. I got it. <laughs> Yeah, so I feel like if I had that kind of knowledge, you know, the next generation of people will be like, oh, that sounds like pot. Let's look at this. Yeah, definitely. definitely. I know. I feel like we're definitely like our generation is like the first that's going and our parents, too, in some cases. But our generation, for sure, we're like advocating for ourselves and each other and digging for information because it's at your fingertips, on your phone, on your computer, wherever. So it's it's really cool that we have all that knowledge and information. Yeah, yeah it's like, oh, I learned about this on Grey's Anatomy. I'm an expert now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There is an episode on Grace. Yes, Academy there is. Where a girl has pop. They just think she's drunk, but she's yeah. not. <laughs> she has pop. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like crazy. I mean, it's cool though. It's like you're hurt. You're helping people be hurt for less often. Like when we were watching the Ashley documentary and she would offer medication, it was brutal to watch. Yeah. Like her to like her to be like she's so like calm and. Yeah. Like, Mm-hmm. And then to see her like all this stress and like, yeah. like I'm there probably to need to like lunge at the camera to like kill <laughs> everyone. Yeah, yeah, and that's like it's interesting to see that in a film because that's the reality of it that we have good days and we have bad days, and we look completely able-bodied. 
And so from the outside, people think like, oh, you're just being dramatic or, oh, you're like, you're fine. Like, you're fine. You're young, like whatever. You're, there's nothing wrong with you. But in reality, we're dealing with these really crazy symptoms that are debilitating and painful and it makes it really hard to live a normal life. Um, but from the outside, we look able-bodied. So um, it's really cool to see Ashley showing that and showing the reality of living with a chronic illness in a way that's accessible for everyone. Like, I, it's, it's, it's easier to have your family sit down and watch a film or listen to a podcast than it is to hand them like a stack of papers and be like, read this or read this whole website. And you, then you'll be able to learn about what it's like to live with what I have. It's so much more accessible to people to be like, Hey, like, let me send you this link to this podcast or like watch this movie. It's really great. And it fully explains what it's like to live with chronic illness. And so that's like opening a whole new opportunity for people who are able-bodied or our younger generations to learn about what it's like to be chronically ill and how you can support your loved ones in your life that are chronically ill. Yeah, like when I'm, I was describing all the symptoms in the beginning, it's kind of easy to say, oh, that doesn't sound too bad. But like, yeah. you, you really have to spot someone and go through the motion and you'll see how life disabling it is. Like, I remember, like, I didn't know, I didn't really know much about pause. So I was like, it's like assuming with Ashley that like at one point, well, I'll just be interviewing her and she'll just be on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I, like I would prepare, like I didn't, I, I wouldn't say I was overly cautious, but I was just, like prepared for it. And I just thought it'd be just really funny. It's just like at one moment, like the, there's like a camera cut and then she's just on a floor talking. Yeah. <laughs> I know. It's the reality of it, though. It's <laughs> reality. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. luckily, there's great medications that can manage our symptoms so that when we're sitting here, we're not falling over. But if we weren't on medications, that that would be what we would be doing. No, of course, but it's just, like it's the same for you guys. Like if you needed to take a time minute break, you know, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, to me, I'm more understandable now because I'm more knowledgeable about it. But like the next person, probably like why, why, like right. what's wrong with sitting, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. <laughs> yeah, like I mean, if anyone watching, they probably would even know that anything's wrong with you, like you said before. Like we could have a totally normal conversation. I could totally change the title of the video yeah. or, <laughs> yeah. and we'll be talking about strawberries and like everyone will be like oh it's about strawberries you know yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> no one would bat an eye but, yeah. but i wanted to um talk about so it said that you both were started about um i have here epstein bar virus not to get confused with jeffrey epstein for the record <laughs> For the record, he did not kill himself. A different, a different terrible it, scene. Yeah. <laughs> this isn't, isn't a murder podcast just for you guys to know. <laughs> but I'm just confused. So you got, I know Claire got mono and I kind of started her whole diagnosis journey. But like, I'm kind of confused. So you got a virus and it like triggered everything or? Okay, so um, it's kind of like many things, you know, there is like the scientific name and then the name that everyone else knows. So Epstein-Barr virus, also known as mono to most people. But I think when you get so deep into like the medical world that you're living in, you you end up then referring to it as Epstein-Barr virus or EBV, but it is mono. But in our, in our case, because we're dealing with the titers and going to the doctor all the time, and, and am I in a flare right now and my titers are up and I have had Epstein-Barr again recently, you start saying that. So um, it is mono, it's both the same, but for, uh, you know, like I think COVID-19 is also like SARS-CO2 or something like that. Um, but I think that like I say Epstein-Barr just because that's how like I started out with a neurologist um, talking about it like that. And I think for Claire, because she was significantly younger, 
she started out talking about it like yeah. as mono yeah. Um, but our, our neurologist says EBV usually. And so most viruses do cause postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome is pretty common to have a virus. And then it's not the only cause, but it is a major one up there on the list. Um, and so now we actually are, our titers are so high that now we have chronically active Epstein-Barr virus. So C-A-E-V-V. It's a lot of information. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like a lot of letters. It's like coding. Yeah. Almost. Yeah. So pretty much um the titers that Justin is talking about is your blood work. And so there's like three different things that are testing for EBB. Um, and there's one that tells you if you've had it in the past, one if you've had it currently. And then your numbers are like your titers. They want to see. Um, if you're like below a certain number, your EBV is not active. Um, and so you're like in a good spot, but once your numbers start jumping, then you're an active chronic active EBV. And so we have like reoccurring chronic active EBV. We constantly are going in and out of having high titers, low titers, high titers, low titers. So we have to continuously get like blood work to just check where things are. Um, because when, when our titers are high, we feel terrible. It's like a flare up, we're tired, we feel sick. Um, Your body's kind of like fighting this little battle internally. And I feel like because of COVID, we're seeing a lot of like the kind of cartoon animation of like what COVID does to your body and what your body is doing to fight it. And so it's like the same thing. It's our same bodies thing. are just constantly fighting these little little like monsters, monsters <laughs> all the time. And so it's it's a lot of work, I think, physically. Yeah, but the common there's like a common misconception about viruses that your body can fight it off. Um and your body can fight it off. We're equipped to fight viruses, but unfortunately viruses can also attack your body in so many ways. It can attack your immune system and you could be immunocompromised for the rest of your life. It could attack your brain matter like it did Jessica, it can attack your autonomic nervous system. I've heard of it attacking people's like spinal cords even. And so it's very dangerous. Um, despite like mono seems like, oh, like everybody, like you just get mono when you're in high school or middle school or whatever from other kids and you get over it and you move on. But for some people, um, mono can actually attack your body and leave lifelong repercussions. Um, and it's not something that's highly researched unfortunately yeah it's been around since like the six well okay it was discovered in the 60s and there's just because it 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 doesn't harm as many people this particular virus there just isn't very much attention on it yeah so i i do know that again because of all the covid stuff they're looking to make different types of antiviral medications there's a lot of research going into it and so i think that part is really exciting i mean i don't really know what that would do for us in our virus but it's you know there isn't really very many medications for viruses so it's exciting to know that there is research being done and hope that there could be treatment for different viruses so are you guys saying that you kind of have the virus in you at all times, but it doesn't become active? Yeah, like a, like I, Claire recently oh, almost gave it to me because she, <laughs> so like we always have it in our body, always. Our, our titer numbers are so high that it's chronic, but, but we can go in and out of being contagious. And so it's pretty easy to know, Claire, recognizes it pretty well and quickly I do sometimes <laughs> um and so recently she was Active, contagious yeah. and I'm like no I was all oh wait don't drink that <laughs> yeah yeah so is COVID better for you guys or worse we don't know we We've don't know had it. um we've 
heard from our neurologist at Stanford that um, some it, people have needed ablations. Some people have been hospitalized for weeks. Just, yeah, um, there was another person that has POTS that um, got COVID and he's actually paraplegic now um, oh because of COVID-19. So it would, it's a high risk um, no matter what, because we are constantly fighting EBV, otherwise known as mono, um, we are immunocompromised. Um, so it's a we high risk. Know, yeah. yeah, we, we don't know what it would be like. So we'd rather just stay away. Yeah. <laughs> um, was the pandemic better for you or the worse for you? Um, and it, it was really, great for me. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's interesting because I mean, I think similarly to everyone else, it was difficult in some ways, but I think as far as the fear aspect, there's not much option as far as just being relaxed, you know, there's there, I'm, I don't know, it's so hard because you're constantly worried and fearful and trying to do everything you can to keep everyone clean and healthy. Um, for me, I have kids. So watching them, I ended up coming like to a realization that even though it was really scary for me, because it's so much unknown, um, their mental health as far as going to school and actually being in person in school just was far more important to me personally. They needed that so bad. And I had to like, just be okay with them going to school and hope that they're doing everything right. But um, I think, you know, it, there's a period where everyone was really scared and being careful. And so you felt like, okay, everyone gets it. But then when people start to come out and they start to get really relaxed about it, and you're still scared and they're like, what's going, you know, get over it. It's fine. It's whatever. Um, you're like, okay, but my body doesn't, my body's still in the same vulnerable position that it was when we started this. So that doesn't change for me, the worry and concern of what if. Yeah. For me, like definitely there was like a lot of anxiety surrounding the pandemic but at the same time, it was kind of great for me because I was able to stay home. I worked from home, which is the ideal situation for me, was working from home. I was able to rest often. Um, everybody's wearing a mask and I'm wearing a mask, um, which is hard sometimes when you're feeling really dizzy. But at the same time, it protected me from other people. And it protected me not only from COVID, but it protected me from the flu. And it protected me from like common colds that when I get sick, like anytime anybody around me is sick, I get sick. I get whatever they have constantly. If you have strep, I'm going to have strep. If you have the flu, I'm going to get the flu. And so by them wearing a mask, it protected me from that, which was really nice. And I had a year long of only dealing with my own health stuff and not getting other people's like flus and sicknesses so in that aspect it was it's been pretty nice that I've been feel I feel protected by that um but yeah it's it's weird because there's definitely still the anxiety of being an immunocompromised person um but there's positives also <laughs> um, so it just seems like the both pros and cons to stay home but it seems like you're in better shape now than you ever been? Is that fair to say? Um, I'm going through a flare up right now, but at the like during the shutdown, I feel like I was doing really well. Um, I was able to kind of give my body a much needed rest. Um, so it was actually pretty great for me. Um, but I am in another flare up right now, which has nothing to do with pandemic having gastroparesis issues. Um, so that's just a whole other thing. But during the shutdown, it was great. I never got any other illnesses and I was able to rest and yeah. I feel like for me, I was doing, I felt like I was like doing really, really great up until um, the 
beginning ish of the year. And so I was in a, I thought I was in a good place up until then. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then, and then, um, I went downhill pretty quick. So yeah, it's kind of constantly like that for us. We'll have a couple good months and then we'll have a couple really bad ones. Um, just a constant roller coaster of symptoms. And I think sometimes it could be like, it, you know what it's related to exactly. And then other times I think your body is just constantly internally working and working and working. And you might be able to like take a nap and rest, but because everything's inside is working, it just gets tired. And so it needs like its own break. And when it takes a break, then everything else kind of like domino effect falls also. And you're like, oh, great this again. And then you got to beef up everything and then it starts getting on track again. So, yeah. So are you guys ready to like go out and explore the world now? <laughs> well, maybe not quite <laughs> for me, <laughs> but I feel like we're getting there. I'm, I'm in the middle of like, I have like five doctor's appointments a week. I'm getting an endoscopy next week. I'm like in the trenches of trying to fix what's happening to me um but once I get everything settled I'll be back on track but it's my busy season so for work so I'm gonna be in my workshop constantly for the next few months but that's fine for me (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I did actually explore the world a little bit. I she was did. like, she risked it all. <laughs> I had like serious cabin fever. I was like, I got to get out of here. And um, nobody wanted to go anywhere with me. So I took my We're all scared. I took my 14 year old and we went on an adventure. So that was great. So I did want to go back and forth. So you're saying that only you guys and your family has, as you mentioned in your podcast, in a podcast that uh, your mom had EDS and spread it to you guys? Well, um, not necessarily. She herself doesn't have it, but it came down that family line genetically. And um, her dad did for sure. Yeah, our grandpa had EDS. And he, he um, so when he was little, he got polio and it stunted his growth and he had scars in his lungs his whole, the rest of his life. Um, but otherwise he functioned pretty well. And then when he was, I think it was like, um, just a little under a year before he passed away, he had a blockage in his, um, intestines and it was a really traumatic medical situation physically for his body. And he ended up having POTS after that. So, um, he definitely, for sure, it came from that side of the family. Looking back at medical history, it makes sense. But our mom does not. Yeah, yeah. Our mom is the least flexible person. She can't even touch her toes. So <laughs> she definitely doesn't have all her stand loss. <laughs> Wait, the pot's been around for a while? I do kind of like a recent diagnosis. Like It's probably been around a long time, but we didn't know about it. So, um, um, do, you, do you actually know that your grandfather had POTS or you kind of just? Yes, no. So, so he passed away two years, three years ago, yeah. two years ago. Two years ago. Um, and he was, he was diagnosed with it uh, about like eight months before he passed away. And it was caused by the medical trauma that he had experienced in with his blockage and everything in his body and his doctor just said you know this can happen and people it was a really traumatic incident for his body to go through so he did get diagnosed and was taking medication for it mm-hmm. uh-huh. he's on the same medications as me yeah <laughs> so it passed a genetic thing or is it was it a random occurrence from getting a disease and that triggered it so i think that in most cases it's triggered and what start so like back to like the first question about what you would get rid of I say Eller Stanlow syndrome because that's like the first like in the pyramid of everything the top then that is where it starts and so um the Eller Stanlow syndrome just puts you in a position where you're higher risk to getting a lot of different things if your body gets things for example like a virus and so um because he had the EDS 
that made it one of those things where he was more susceptible to probably like when he was younger, being the one of his four siblings that got polio and ended up um, really sick and it stunted his growth and all that. So I think that's where it starts. And then the POTS comes off, comes after not always like hundred percent guarantee, but you're already in a vulnerable position. And I just got away with it also for 30 years. So yeah. And Ella's damn loss is genetic. That's nuts. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's like a lot of information when I'm explaining it. I feel like people eventually, you just start yeah. to sound like you're like the teacher on like, like a map of like, okay, so this, and then this <laughs> connects to that. And then this connects to this. But I feel like you end up sounding like the teacher on Charlie Brown where like you're talking oh, and then oh, you're all, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> people are just like, oh, I can't, too, yeah. much. <laughs> too much information. Yeah, it's, uh, it's just, so it summarizes, it seems like EDS contributing factor to everything that goes down here. Yeah, totally, totally. Before I take the mic away from you guys, is there anything you want to promote or say or the mic is yours? Well, I think definitely if you or someone you know has anything under the dysautonomia umbrella and has POTS or anything in that that area, I totally recommend people watch Ashley's documentary. It's the only one out there that covers it. And oh, we're, wow. everyone is visual. A lot of people are very visual. And so seeing people experience that and listening to how they feel and their stories, I just felt really seen watching that film. And so I, I think people really should watch that for sure. But um, Dysautonomia International is awesome also. If anybody feels like they might be suffering from similar symptoms, they also have medical ID cards that you can get on their website. And then our podcast is This Only Heard a Little. And you can go listen to one probably pretty soon after this. Yes. And then... Yeah, same thing on Instagram. This will only hurt a little. And we have Facebook and TikTok and Twitter, so you can follow us all those places. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like I mentioned before, that you, if you're not smiling five minutes into it, then there's something wrong with you. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Not with us. We try. Yeah. We try to make it fun. We try to make it fun. <laughs> no, I, hey, it's super great, and I I will listen to it more. But thank you, for, yeah. thank you guys for coming. Thank you, everyone, for listening, and I'll catch you later. Bye-bye.